Recognizing the need for a development plan for the Kingston Harbor, the Mona Geoinformatics Institute embarked on a study to assess the impact of garbage flowing into the harbor from land-based sources such as harborside communities. A 3D tool called hydrodynamic modeling was used. Hydrodynamic modeling allows us to, to really bring in a four-dimensional approach to the Kingston Harbor to, to, to test scenarios and possibilities as well as the realities that exist out there right now. Because anything that is going to be looking at cruise shipping in the harbor is going to have to look at everything in the harbor. Uh, the downtown, downtown Kingston redevelopment project is going to require a look at everything. Uh, the, the port of Kingston, uh, public health concerns about the quality of water in Kingston Harbor. And then ultimately, uh, the incorporation of hydrodynamic principles allows us to go all the way inland to the source of what's happening in Kingston Harbor. The coastline around Kingston Harbor uh, is not the end of the Kingston Harbor. Kingston Harbor extends many, many kilometers inland. Um, and ultimately, it is these areas that feed the Kingston Harbor, uh, for better or for worse. And people living in the hills of St. Andrew are effectively harbor side because there literally is a straight line between them and the Kingston Harbor and that's called a gully. Fifteen gullies and rivers are incorporated into the model. It confirmed that a huge amount of the garbage which ends up in the Kingston Harbor gets there through complex gully and river drainage systems crisscrossing Kingston, St. Andrew and Portmore in St. Catherine. Data collected indicate that a significant amount of the garbage flowing into the Kingston Harbor is from the Sandy Gully in Kingston. The Rio Cobre is also a very important um, contributor of, uh, of solid waste into the Kingston Harbor. Um, other major gully systems, Shoemaker, um, Barnes Gully, Jew Gully, these are all major, major um, contributors to Kingston Harbor because they empty into the Kingston Harbor. Um, but, but again, it is not the outflow point that's the concern. It is where it's coming from upstream. You mentioned a while ago harborside communities. And I just uh, uh, give an example of a very easy one. Port Royal. Port Royal does not create the garbage that's choking Port Royal. I think we can establish that as a fact. So in the same way, communities are on, the, on the northern shore of the harbor, um, Greenwich Town, for example, the garbage that affects the Greenwich Town community is not all coming from Greenwich Town. And that's a very important distinction. Several initiatives designed to reduce the amount of garbage that ends up in the Kingston Harbor have been implemented. Among them, a ban on plastic bags and the recycling of plastic bottles. When these are discarded in Manor Park, they end up in the Kingston Harbor. When these are discarded in Barbican, they end up in Kingston Harbor. Whether you throw it in a gully or on the roadside, it ends up in Kingston Harbor. Uh, unless it's collected and deposited properly at Riverton City, it ends up in Kingston Harbor. Even if you throw it in your backyard, it stays in your backyard for a couple of weeks, eventually it will end up in Kingston Harbor. And that's what we have to be able to be very clear in understanding that this is not just a Greenwich Town problem or Port Royal problem, it's everywhere. It's just a matter of time. The garbage is not only having an adverse effect on the environment, it's also affecting commercial activity, investment opportunities, and public health. A major container terminal at the port of Kingston is affected by debris in the Kingston Harbor. We're talking about ship propellers that are going to be knotted up and hulls that are dinged by floating refrigerators that are causing damage to these, these ships. Uh, that's a cost, that's an economic cost, both in terms of real dollars as well as loss of productivity, delays in shipping and so on. The ability to attract investments and more ships to call on the port of Kingston, that's direct, that's real dollars. Um, you also talk about plans about the revitalization of downtown Kingston. You talk about new investments in corporate headquarters and bringing people back downtown. There are a myriad of projects that are slated uh, in the downtown Kingston space Millions of dollars are being spent on, on master plans and so on. These are threatened by the fact that part of the appeal of downtown Kingston is the Kingston Harbor. You talk about public health issues related to the Kingston Harbor, whether people are directly ingesting Kingston Harbor water or are nauseated by the smell. All of these things will be addressed by fixing the Kingston Harbor. And then you have the environment itself. There is money in the environment 
direct and indirect. You're talking about the mangroves, you talk about fisheries, you talk about fishermen who rely on, on, on the viability of these environments in order for them to make their living. You talk about cruise shipping. Cruise shipping is different from container shipping in one very important regard. The appeal of a physical place to attract tourists to come here will depend on a pristine environment. And so we need to make sure that the environment is ready for them. You don't want to take them to Kingston Harbor and then to see all these the, the Ramsar protected mango wetlands and they're nauseated by a smell or they're just busy um, stepping over garbage than actually seeing a, a bird or a crab or whatever they want to look at. So those are the elements from an economic basis that the Kingston Harbor is more than just about um, a mangrove or a fisheries area or so on. It's all related. There are plans to restore Kingston Harbor to its once pristine state using the findings of the hydrodynamic modeling study. Policies, legislation, enforcement will also be very important. Um, we're talking about anything ranging from enforcing existing litter laws, uh, improving the capacity of the National Solid Waste Management as, um, Agency to, to not just collect, but collect frequently, collect capably without missing anything in between, um, reliably, <clears throat> those are going to be important elements as well. But fundamentally at the basis of all of this, we're really going to need uh, a, a, an attitude change, a cultural change towards disposal, uh, the generation of garbage, and ultimately um, the disposal and management of it. It is not somebody else's problem. It's your problem, it's my problem, it's all our problem at the same time. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Carol Francis.